I see that a lot of times clients pick stylists who have a great online presence and they feel like, hey, I could sit down and hang out with a stylist for two, three hours while I get my extensions done. I feel like we have a lot in common. That's a selling point that helps people sit in your chair. So I think showcasing who you are is super important. Hello and welcome to the Elevate Podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Nowakowski. I'm a salon owner, educator, mindset, and leadership coach that helps salon owners go from overwhelmed and burnt out to motivated and empowered. It is my mission to help you systemize your business, generate more profit, and create a career that you love. Join us every week to learn about the small shifts you can make to elevate your business regarding mindset, marketing, social media, business systems, and so much more. Welcome to the Elevate Podcast. On today's episode, we have Megan, who is our marketing director. Megan literally handles all of the backend things for my business, and she is a miracle worker. So I wanted her on today because I wanted to talk about some of the things that she does to help boost our business, to help get us more traction online, and also to help us drive revenue to all of the different entities we have inside of Opulent Beauty. So Megan, do you want to take a moment to introduce yourself? Absolutely. I am Megan Herrick. As Patricia said, I'm the marketing director here at Opulent Beauty Salon and Opulent Beauty Pro. It's been about two years since I've been in this role. And a little fun fact, I've worked for Patricia now for six and a half years, I think it is, Patricia. (laughs) Um, But I worked my way through college, front desk. So I learned a lot about the beauty industry being in the salon. And now it's super fun to take my marketing and communication skills and bring that to Patricia's business in a different way. So I'm excited to be on today's episode. So one of the things that people always talk about is outsourcing their social media. And I think the biggest struggle that a lot of salon owners have is a lot of social media people do not have the background in beauty. And I think having a background in understanding our industry is so important to really get a clear message across to future clients or, you know, future employees. Megan, do you want to talk about some of the things that you've picked up while working with us for the last six years? Because I think that's what makes you such an amazing fit for this role is not only have you been with me for six and a half years, but you've actually paid attention in those six and a half years on all the things that are important to drive revenue to our business. So if you had somebody who was looking for a social media person or a marketing director, what are some of the key elements that you've found in our industry that you utilize to actually build our social media? Something that I do all the time, and I think no matter who you hire, if they don't have the background that I do, is they have to do their research. Like I am on email lists and reading stuff about the beauty industry all the time. So if you're going to just like go and outsource something, you need to have somebody who's going to research it like a research paper that they would in college or something like that. But they need to be really aware about what's going on in the industry and not be like, sure, I could take on this project. They need to really prove themselves that they're willing to put in the work and learn more about the industry as a whole. So that's something that I think is super important to look for when you're hiring somebody if they don't already have the background. You could ask them what they're doing already to, you know, be in the know about your industry, what they're going to continue to learn, how they're going to continue to grow. I think that's super important. As for me, I have a little different perspective, right? Because I've been in the salon. I understand a bit about like mixing color, a bit about how to run the business because I've been seeing Patricia all these years (laughs) behind the scenes. Um, seeing how a small business works. So I think that gives me a little bit of a leg up, but I'm still doing all of that work on the side of being very involved in the industry, being in the know. And I think that's super important and oftentimes overlooked when I see people hiring and outsourcing. So another thing that is really great about Megan is Megan does a lot of research. She pulls our audience. She researches things online. So she's all about finding the facts. So since you have been working for us, what are some key things that you have found while handling our marketing and social media that are an absolute must to drive clients into the salon and to drive traffic to our social media? Yeah. You definitely said it. Like I'm the poll and survey queen. <laughs> I think it's super important to see what your audience wants, what they need, 
And I tell the stylist too on Patricia's team, like if somebody's asking you the same question, like two or three clients in your chair, maybe it's about a product or about a service or they have a hair concern. That is definitely something that's a wider need amongst more people in your audience and in your community. So then you could take that data and create content with it or promote a certain service or product with it. So I think it's super important to kind of get in the minds of your audience. And now with social media and Instagram stories and the poll feature and stuff, it's pretty easy to do. You don't need to spend a ton of time and energy like putting these things together. So that's something that I do often is polling the audience on Instagram. And I recommend if you have time today to like carve out some time and ask your audience, you know, have you been to my salon? What are you looking to learn? Why do you follow me? Are you a stylist or a potential client? What's your biggest hair question? What kind of products do you want to learn about? Little questions like that. And then your content is done for you. I think that's one of the biggest things I hear from stylists all the time is like, what the heck am I going to post about? Let your audience do the work for you. And then in terms of bigger surveys, you could totally automate that and see how was your guest's experience and any other things like that, just automating surveys and collecting that data, looking at that. And then whether you hire on somebody, that'd be awesome for them to have to look at. Or if you are making your own content and things like that, then the hard work is done for you. The guesswork is taken out of it. So I think that's something that's overlooked and important to do. And I think the beautiful thing about surveys, a lot of people are afraid to send out a survey because they don't want to hear negative things about their business. But in reality, that is an opportunity. Like a negative response is an opportunity to refine and make your business better. So I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate about Megan is that she's always on top of finding the holes and gaps in our business so we could really make it so much better for our client experience and even for our stylist experience and our salon suite owner experience because we even pull pull them as if they were a client um, because they're the ones that actually drive business in our salon too. They bring in clients. They're the ones who generate revenue. So I think treating your stylists and anyone that's a part of your business, like they're a client as well, is really, really important. I think that's one of the things I've learned over the last few years. So when it comes to social media, because this is literally the number one struggle I hear from everyone. They don't have time. They don't know what to post about. They're afraid to put themselves out on social media. They don't think it's as important as, you know, as we say it is. Let's dive into that. And let's talk about what you think the non-negotiables are for social media and what people need to be doing. It's not a want, like they have to do these things in order to have a supported business. Definitely reels. And it seems to be a thorn in everybody's side. I know it takes a lot of time and energy to put them together and the editing is tedious. So one, if you could outsource it, right? Like I make reels, I batch them for Patricia. We have content creation days. That's something that's super helpful. But two, if you have a team, I assign the team every week a new reel. I just scroll through, I find audio or some sort of trend and I give that to them. And then every week, you know, you have what, 11 stylists now? So that's more than one reel per day. So instead of taking everything and thinking you have to do it all, sharing that work, whether you're going to hire somebody or you're going to assign it to your team. And then Patricia holds the team accountable and we have content that's easily put together with a group effort. It's not just all in one person. I think another thing I do is we use band for communication inside of our salon and it is a game changer. So we don't do any texting inside of band. We have a direct message, which I will actually assign videos as well of my staff talking into the camera about different topics. So we'll do uh, you know, why you like extensions, your favorite product for extensions, your favorite tools, and they will send a one minute short video into that message group. Because I do believe that your stylists need to actually show face and speak into the camera to build that trust with your team. So Megan and I literally just collect content all week long. And Every single week we ask them for pictures and you can even use, you know, standalone pictures of hair to also create reels. So it doesn't have to necessarily be a video all the time, but I think that reels is definitely something that has uh, made a difference in our audience too. Um, and then Megan, will you talk about how we got monetized for reels? Yes. I'm not even sure exactly how we just got a notification about it after we were consistently posting for probably a few months. 
And so now that's another way that we're able to earn revenue through posting. We're going to post reels anyway, right? So um, that's a pretty awesome perk that we now have. And it's even more motivating to get the team on board and that we can keep monetization status for us. So that's pretty cool too. And something that I think all salon owners should try to strive for at least because it doesn't hurt to get a little bit of extra money if you're going to post on Instagram anyway for your business. If social media is a struggle and you are so organized and you are so great at automating, can you talk about some of the things that you implement to really make sure our social media is kind of done for us and that you're not sitting in front of the phone every single day trying to figure out what to post? You stay very organized and you really do have it. So um, it's batched and done, and then it automatically posts throughout the week. Yes, absolutely. I think that getting ahead on content is super important, no matter if you're a stylist or salon owner, because life happens. Um, You know, people maybe get sick or life is busy or you want to take a vacation and you don't want to be married to your phone. So I think it's super important to invest in or start using a scheduler service. We now use Meta Business Suite, so Facebook Business Suite, and it's free. And I think that the capabilities are pretty good. So if you're not ready to financially invest in something yet, then you have no excuse to get ahead on your content because Facebook business suite is free. And then something else too about scheduling your content. I really don't think you need to post every day. We post in our feed, like a static feed post every other day at least. And that's where we're kind of educational. We show hair pictures. We celebrate our team, right? If somebody has a birthday or a business anniversary, or they're going to raise their prices, we celebrate them in that way being sure that you're posting consistently, but not every day. And I think when you take away the everyday factor, it's a little less intimidating. And I recommend sitting down once a month, if you could, and just getting everything done for the month. That'll be a huge stress relief for you. Looking at the calendar, right? I'm always looking ahead and seeing what's coming up. Right now it's what, November 8th. So we have uh, Small Business Saturday, Black Friday, the holidays coming up. So keeping that in mind and then scheduling things around what's coming up in the future, that takes a huge um, stressor off Patricia's plate and my plate. And we're able to stay super organized and on top of things. Also, one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize they can do or they feel like they can't is reusing content. <laughs> You can reuse content and repurpose content that you've already had. Um, Nine times out of 10, somebody's not going to see or remember that you posted something a month ago. So I think feeling overwhelmed and thinking you have to come up with new stuff every single week is something that is also really intimidating. So when you stockpile your content over time, you can go back from, you know, six months from now and pull some of that content if it's relevant to your business today. So I think that's something like that is very, very powerful when it comes to really figuring out and planning your social media is not overthinking it, not overcomplicating it and reusing what you already have. We we, we reuse stuff all the time. So on top of social media, because that is such a thorn, what are some other non-negotiables and things that you feel people really need to do to market their business to also drive clients into the salon or just, you know, just revenue in general? I think another big thing is just showcasing who you are online, that building a personal brand. I know, Patricia, you've talked about this a lot and you feel very passionately about this. And I think rightfully so, because especially in this industry, right, if you're a hairstylist and maybe you have the opportunity to move states, how are you going to restart your business in another place? If you have a personal brand, I'm not saying it makes it super easy, but it makes it much easier to build up that way versus starting from scratch and not having a personal brand and things like that. So showcasing who you are online, that's in the stories, showing your face, letting people hear your voice, seeing who you are, right? I see that a lot of times clients pick stylists who have a great online presence and they feel like, hey, I could sit down and hang out with a stylist for two, three hours while I get my extensions done. I feel like we have a lot in common. That's a selling point. That helps people sit in your chair. So I think showcasing who you are is super important. I know, Patricia, you've done a great job at that already for a couple of years. And I'm sure you could attest to seeing how it's built your business and your salon by not just posting about business stuff, showing who you are, letting people hear your voice and learning a bit about yourself. 
One of the things I'm in a group called Brand Builders Group, and they're amazing. If you are a salon owner, if you are somebody who wants to get into education, please sign up with this company because they are so strategic. They really know their crap. I'm not going to swear. Um, but one of the things that they said is that when people feel like they know you, they trust you. So the more that you show online, the more likely they are to buy from you because they feel like they know you as a person. And I think that's so powerful. And since I've been in this group, I've really been showcasing more of you know, who I am, what my life looks like outside of the salon. And it really has helped build one, a closer relationship with my current clients because they talk about the things that I post, right? Two, it helps me build my coaching students because again, they feel like they know me and trust me. So you don't always have to showcase, you know, what you're doing in the salon. You can show what you do in the morning, your coffee. Like these are all things that like make you, you that are really going to help people really get to know you. And when people feel like they know you, that's when they feel like they really trust you and trust is everything when it comes to making purchases, especially large purchases, like, you know, a program or, you know, a, a big hair service. Or, you know, even just like coming into your business, especially as a salon owner, people are more likely to spend with somebody's business who they feel like they know personally. So if you are showcasing who you are as a salon owner and somebody's trying to choose between your salon and another, and they feel like they know you more, they're going to go into your business. So I think that's really, really powerful and, and important. Megan, you also run our email list. And you also do other things for the salon. So what are some other things that you feel are important to really help keep our business elevated? In terms of email marketing, I think that it's super important to keep in touch with clients that way. So we send out weekly emails and they're more lighthearted and fun. It's not always like book now, book now, buy this product, right? It's educational. It's adding value to people's inboxes. So we send that out every Monday. It's again, celebrating our team, showing our team's face, things like that, depending on what's going on that week at the salon. So that's something that I do weekly. There's also a few things that we have automated that's email based that has been really great. So when you go to our website, we offer new people to Opulent Beauty Salon, a complimentary blowout. So they have to give us their email and join our email list in order to get that. And that's something that I set up once and it's done. And that's something that I recommend if you're doing yourself or if you want to hire out things like that, that are automated, that can help your business grow overnight, right? To reach new people. So that's one thing. Another thing too is forms. We automate all of our forms. So if you're a new client and you fill out a form that gets sent to our management team and then the management team from there could give them a call. Same thing with extension consultation form and things like that. Everything is automated as much as possible. So we're not doing all these little tedious tasks all day long that ends up wasting our time. Maybe even like a monthly email newsletter going out, something that's again, educational and not so salesy is very valuable. And then automating any types of forms or collecting emails, some sort of freebie to give away, I recommend on your website, instead of just saying sign up for a newsletter or things like that. That's something that I've seen a lot of success in too. And then in terms of like the email list, a lot of people are like, so what, what's the big deal? I mean, anything could happen to your social media account easily. It could be taken away, it could randomly get banned. I've heard plenty of horror stories. So I think capturing people's emails and starting to collect that and market that way is a safer way to stay in touch with your clients. I have seen so many people's accounts on Instagram get hacked. My Facebook page yesterday was uh, switched to another language and I couldn't access my business accounts. So I couldn't read them. So, I mean, you never know your email list is your email list. And again, there was something that just happened with Instagram where people got locked out of their accounts and then followers dropped because their accounts disappeared for a second. So you could be one of those people. And if you're relying just solely on that for your business, then if that happens, what would you do? So I love that you're so on top of our email list and you've really, you know, taught me the importance of it and utilize it in a way that makes me feel secure about our business. Kind of wrapping things up, what are some final words that you have for people who are trying to grow and trying to really build their, their salons and their, just their business in general? 
My advice would be to start small, like pick one thing you really want to focus on, right? I think social media, we look at it and it's like, okay, I have to make reels. And like, should I put this on TikTok? Do I need to make a TikTok account? Oh, I didn't post on my stories. I haven't posted in my, like it gets overwhelming. So pick one thing and just start there. And I would recommend it being, if possible, reels or something where you're showcasing who you are, showcasing your face, your personality, because building your personal brand is super important. So I would say pick one thing. And the second piece of advice I would give is what I mentioned earlier, pulling your audience on Instagram stories, getting to learn a bit about who they are, what they're looking for, why do they follow you? What do they want to learn about? What services are they interested in? So that way, when it comes time to create more content, then you're not as overwhelmed. You have all that data to look at and you let them basically do the hard work for you. Well, thank you so much for being here on today's podcast, Megan, and you're going to edit this soon. Um, And Megan and I are putting together an amazing program and it's going to launch very soon. And it's all done for you things to help you run your business. So it's emails, it's captions, it is all the things that will take that pressure off of your uh, life and give you more freedom as a salon owner. So I'm super excited to be launching that soon. There are so many other things included in the membership that we are creating that will really help you grow your business. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for listening to today's podcast.